We're back on the record in Huber versus Bonds. And Mr. Huber, you're still under oath. Go ahead, Mr. Allen. Uh, I apologize to the court, Your Honor. Um, I thought it was an exception under Nevada Revised Statutes. It's, uh, I believe it's a California one, but it's not in Nevada Revised uh, Statutes. Okay. That's an exception, so. All right. Um, so Exhibit 27 offered into evidence is not admitted. It's a bit 27. Okay. It consists of two pages, I think, three? Two pages. Two pages. Okay. So, can I continue my examination? Of course. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Huber, uh, going back to the uh, uh, 284, uh, Huber 284, if you can, um, the postman 375, and then it was a Yes. Um, can you go ahead and read, according to that document, how many truancy letters was sent? Yes. How many times? Uh, let's, let's kind of... 0284. Yeah. 284. 284. 284. 284. Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Uh, by U.S. mail, I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine truancy letters sent. And in Pam Fultz's own handwriting below that's faded, you see she wrote truancy letters sent. This um, was handed to me directly by Pam Fultz. So, to your knowledge, has the school ever had to get a truancy officer involved? Yes, Pam Fultz has informed me that multiple truancy letters were, were sent and that attendance officers were sent to the house as well. Truancy officers were sent to the house. So when it says PLP contact log, and it says contacted by, do you know what that information is? Yes, I believe those are the administrators that um, sent the correspondences, the truancy letters. Letter. They were responsible for executing them. And for the time period indicated on this document from Clark County, December 2017 to November 2018, what grade would he have been in? This would have been in his kindergarten and first grade year, I believe. So it covers two years. Two or, grades. hold on. Um, he starts in August of 2018. So, yeah, that would cover two years. Covers so it covers two. kindergarten and first grade. And at I'm least not sure. Until could, I ask the, could I ask Nikia if that's correct? It's kindergarten, Your Honor. Kindergarten and first grade. Yes. Which mo it's predominantly all the kindergarten. Um, it's okay. You don't have to testify oh, right now, but you oh. will have an opportunity to testify. Oh, okay. So, um, now let me ask you this: Has a defendant, well, has Tristan been away from school for more than fifteen days consecutively? Yes, when he was abducted unlawfully. Uh, he did not attend school for an entire month. Um, can you tell? Can you talk about that? About what happened? There? Yes. Uh, at our last hearing, that was supposed to be this trial. Uh, Nakia was granted an extension under the auspices that she would retain an attorney and fight this case, and that I was, there was a custody change at that time, that I was to be Tristan's temporary primary custodian, and that I was to pick up Tristan from school that day, and that Nakia was not to interfere with his education. Uh, however, after leaving the courtroom, less than 20 minutes after Nakia left the courtroom, uh, verified by the school, the child was picked up early from school um, under the alleged auspices that he had an appointment to attend. And I did not see my son for almost a month after that happened. I used the Clark County School District Police, the North Las Vegas Police, and Metro Police to try to peacefully negotiate getting my child back. Um, and the defendant used loopholes that the police could not enforce it as justification for not giving over the child. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. I know I'm jumping around a bit. Um, Real quick, what I would like to do is, is, is go back. Now you heard that um, you heard that 
admitted that uh, Ms. Bonds um, knew about the March hearing. Did you hear that? She was present, yes. What I would like to do real quick is to uh, refer to what's been previously identified as Exhibit 3. That's going to be from Huber 0035 to Huber 0052. Ready when you are, Council. And um, do you rec and do you recognize these documents? Yes, I do. And what are those documents? They are conversations between me, myself, and Nakia. And are they a fair and accurate representation of those conversations? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I would like to admit what's been previously identified as Exhibit Three into evidence as Exhibit Three. Uh, same question, Ms. Bonds. He's identified these as your conversations. What were the numbers again? Ex it's Exhibit 3, which is actually in front of the 3 tab. So oh. it's on top. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. uh, so it's right after the 2 tab. Okay. 3, 5 to 5, 3. The full effect of the whole conversation. I think that you need the first part of that. She could certainly address that on cross if she wanted to again to assert her disability. So this goes from September 20th to it's March 1st. It's not necessarily in chronological order, Your Honor. Oh, okay, I understand. It's, it's on subject order. Bond, you'll be able to cross-examine him about that, that they are admitted. Perhaps you can lay some foundation and see if that's his phone number and if he... So, on Huber 0035, um, I want to call your attention to the second text in that. That's, uh, do you recognize that text? Yes. And what, and um, is it a fair and accurate representation of the conversation you're having in this page? Yes. And this page hasn't been altered or anything to show? No. Thank you. Remind you, Your Honor, this, the fact that she doesn't recall it, doesn't remember, it's been an excuse for every, not excuse, it's a bad term, it's been an argument, let's say, for every text, a bunch of text messages we've been admitting without. Understood. Your Honor, I didn't say that it was not recalled. I said the full text read was not there. He's talking about your second comment, not your first comment. Oh. Your second comment, I understand, Mr. Allen. Okay, proceed, counsel. Now, has she, has the defendant, uh, has admitted to you about her knowledge of the March trial? Several times in text messages, yes. Uh, I believe the earliest ones were from September of 2018, all the way up to, to just weeks, a week before trial. So can you read for me the third text, it's going to be the first one that um, Ms. Bond sent, uh, it's September 20, 2018, at 8.27 p.m. on Huber 0036. 
you are uh, from Nakia, you are retarded enough, simple mind, because with that mentality and that trash, like thinking of things that gets you nowhere in life, my friend, I don't give a f excuse my language, I don't give a fuck if you approve of his iPad or him having an Xbox or not. He is six years old, those are not necessities in the first place, and are you, are toys, are you kidding? Please stop while you are ahead. This is why you are not fit to parent because of that inexcusable petty mindset. So as it stands, we will go to Corch and Mart. You will stick your weekends. Enough said. Have a nice night. And then read the next one, please. No, and uh, from Nakia, no. And let me reiterate, you would not be talking to me had I not decided to let you in the picture in the first place. Don't get it twisted. Believe me, I had everything I needed from you to make you disappear forever. And I know it's hard in your simple mind to comprehend because you are very simple, speaking cognitively. Because anybody to read our messages, and I can put money on it 100%, would think that what is wrong with him, does he have a disability as far as learning? Not sure how in the realm of common sense you are being ordered to see him on weekends and me telling you to keep him through Monday and then get him a day through the week is me trying to dick you. I don't have to agree to anything. I could drag my feet with everything. But thank you for opening my eyes and showing me the kind of person that you are because that is not the mentality that I want Tristan to pick up at all so much. Weekends, definitely best. You are fucking ridiculous to even allude to the fact that he's like a little orphan Annie. Is your absurd, your ego is much too big. I assure you it's displaced. So we can build on that. Okay, and I know you've read a lot there. I, I would just like for you to read, um, oh, never mind, never mind. Um, so, she, has she ever ex, uh, expressed to you that she didn't know what was going on with the hearings? She claimed in trial that it was only because she came to court the day before trial that she knew about trial. And she denied the entire proceeding and asked for continuance. And um, did, uh, did she get that continuance? She did, yes. Now, she, as you stated, she had mentioned many times that she knew about the March hearing. Five in text messages that I'm aware of that we've been submitted to the court. Has she ever been, has she ever told you that she'll drag out this uh, this court scene, this trial for as long as she can? Yes, and she has successfully accomplished that. Okay, so I want to go ahead and transition again to uh, you were mentioning health issues and how you weren't able to uh, you weren't being notified of those. Now. Would it be fair to say that sometimes you and the defendant were able to talk about certain medical issues that were going on with uh, Tristan? Sometimes, yes. Very limited, but yes. And and if the, to your knowledge, if there are doctors' recommendations or orders uh, regarding Tristan's health, and Nakia doesn't agree with them. Does she follow them? No. Uh, how else does she react to that when you bring that up to her? Uh, well, she basically paints me out and doctors out, medical professionals who've gone through rigorous training programs and educational programs as incompetent, as idiots, as book smart dummies, things of that nature. Has she ever made a, a racist uh, comment uh, in reference to a doctor? She has made a comment that can be interpreted as racist, yes. What was that comment? Uh, in one of the text messages, she told me that it's the stupid Asian or dumbass Asian doctor's fault, not something about insurance um, so, in, in, in regards to a medical issue that the child was having. What I would like for you to do is uh, turn to us when previously identified as exhibit six. 
uh, and the specific page on top of that is deeper. Well, let's, let's do this first. Exhibit 6 starts from... Um, this time. From Huber 112, and then ends on Huber 134. What I would like to do uh, first is, uh, do you recognize uh, the documents uh, in this exhibit? Yes. What are those? What are these documents? They are conversations between me and Nikki Bonds. And are they a fair and accurate representations of said conversations? Yes, they are. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to admit what's been previously identified as Exhibit 6 and two evidence as Exhibit 6. All right, Ms. Bond, same thing. They're identified as his conversations with you. <clears throat> what were the numbers? It's Exhibit 6, so it's in front of the 6 tab. So it would be 0112? I'm going to object again, Your Honor, because full text words are not here, so I feel like it's kind of biased to him um, and some misinformation without allowing the full text thread, which is why they should have been downloaded from the website or obtained a different way so that we could see that nothing was altered or changed on those. All right. If you believe that they were altered or changed, you can cross-examine him about that. Um, you can go page by page if you like. Okay. Okay. But they're admitted. I want to call, and I would like to call your attention, Mr. Hubert, to page 0119. I would like you to read the first two texts in that page. From me. Yes, you stress me out. I'm just trying to take care of some things for Tristan. Shit happens and I'm driving a lot these days. I want him to be covered if something happens. And I want him to have good medical. That cough worries me. I'm not asking you to do any of this for me. It's in his best interest that we take care of business on the back end. From Nakia. Um, no, duh. And the issue is his dumbass Asian doctor, not the insurance. With that being said, I understand where you, you are coming from. I am just confused on the part of the conversation, I guess. On the first part of the conversation, I guess. Who knows? But no worries. It will be taken care of. Stop letting things stress you out. It hasn't stressed you all this time, so don't let it start now. You should not stress things that are out of your control. Your life will be more, much more peaceful. I should be stressed out about my rent, but I'm not because guess what? If you can't do anything about it, you can't do anything about it. It's that simple. Friday, it will be taken care of. Um, Has the, so, and would you consider the term dumbass, dumbass Asian doctor in this context as a racist comment? In my own personal opinion, and if you have to refer to an individual by their race in a conversation, I would interpret that as racism. Yes. Um, in fact, were you, you, you were here when Ms. Spons testified that she would consider that a racist comment, if that was stated right? I don't know that she directly agreed to that, but she said, I, I guess, I believe she said, okay. I guess. That's okay. We'll move on from that. Um, has the, has the defendant ever recommended anything, let's say, unique and uh, um, not, not recommended by doctors as it pertains to Tristan's, uh, Tristan's illness? As part of my main argument in this case, and my greatest concern is that, yes, when confronted with Western medicine and doctors, Nikia berates them, um, disqualifies them, and says that homeopathic cures are the way to go. So she's offered up things like colloidal silver and honey instead of inhalers for his respiratory issues. And uh, can you elaborate on Tristan's respiratory issues a bit? Yes, um, I can actually speak on that now from a medical standpoint, 
because since the last status check, Your Honor, I uh, was able to take Tristan to uh, a pulmonologist and also got his blood work done. Um, and we're determining what allergies he might have. But he was diagnosed with child um, reactive airway disease. So he does have some respiratory issues for sure okay. that we're aware of. So you, you also uh, heard testimony, and in fact, you heard testimony in, in the March 21st hearing as well. Well, sorry, I'm not going to assume you did. Have, have you heard testimony from uh, the defendant at the previous trial hearing um, about about how Tristan always returns sick uh, when coming from your house and her belief was because of your dog. Yes, that's correct. The, uh, the funny thing to point out is that at different times she uses different arguments to basically excuse herself of responsibility. Um, she had no problem, as you stated earlier, with me having the dog that she had adopted and then pawned off to me for my child. Um, but then all of a sudden when I got a new dog, it, it became my dogs who were the reason why Tristan was having problems, why he was sick, why he was missing school. Um, when he was with me, I can attest, he was with the dogs, played with the dogs, and I observed no issues with respiratory or any other kind of illness. So I would like to direct your. Oh, you want to ask a question? Oh, I thought I did. My apologies. I would like to direct your attention, Mr. Huber, to what's been previously identified as Exhibit 10. That exhibit starts on Huber 169 and ends on Huber 0175. Yes. Do you recognize that these documents? Yes, I do. What are they? They are conversations between me and the Kia Bunts. And are they a fair and accurate representation of said conversations? Yes, they are. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to admit what's been previously identified as Exhibit 10 as Exhibit 10, Your Honor, in evidence. Thank you, Ms. Bonds. Exhibit uh, Oh, what are the numbers? You're, at, you're right at it. Oh, okay. You're right yeah. there. So, oh, okay. So 0169 to 0175. The first exhibit, 0169, it was dated back. Uh, the first text will be dated December 26 at 1050. Oh, because they're in front. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Like I said, I apologize to the court. I care a little kind of reverse she, engineering. Yeah, she, was, she went right to it. I saw her go right to it. She I, know, I know she knows, she knows where it's at. Time. No, I, just, I was behind I, it, Your Honor, <laughs> instead of in front of it, behind the tin. So I apologize. Sorry about that. So, um, has the defendant ever suggested you adopt a dog? Yes. When I moved to Las Vegas in December of 2017, I had no animals. Uh, I had no immediate intentions of getting animals. And the Nakia offered, she, she said she found a dog at work. They were giving them away puppies. And she said I should adopt one for Tristan. And were you, uh, so adopt one for Tristan, and so visit, so Tristan was uh, having visitations with you at your place during that time? Yes. Okay. Um, and while Tristan, and did you eventually adopt this dog? Yes, I did. Um, for the benefit of the child, I did not want to explain to Nakia that I don't care for small dogs. They bark a lot. They're annoying. That's not a good, that's not a good thing. I love 
Sorry. I just... <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so you did have uh, you did have the dog while Tristan was staying over. Um, did you ever notice any allergic reactions from this dog? No. Have you ever noticed any allergic reactions? Well, let me back up. You currently maintain temporary physical custody of Tristan, right? Um, Under our loose agreement, yes. I, I had, I had. I mean, there was no, no order no. from the court. I'm saying, uh, so right now, yes. at this moment, you have temporary physical custody Correct. of Tristan, which is essentially sold because of the current team. Temporary protective order, right? Yes. Okay. Since Tristan has been staying with you currently, do you have a dog? Yes, I do. Has he ever had any allergic reactions from that dog? No, he has not. So when Miss Bond says that he's only sick when he's uh, over, comes back from your place, wouldn't be true, then, would it? No. So. So I want to trans uh, again transition over to so you, you had testified before that you weren't getting notified of um, issues going on pertaining to Tristan's education and health as well, and then eventually you found out, and uh, when you found out, you had had you did you approach uh, Miss Bonds about that? I'm sorry, Let could you repeat that? That's a little There's chunky. A lot, a lot, I, fall, yeah, I apologize. Just want to make sure I have to answer that. Once you found or was able to obtain the information regarding uh, Tristan's education, Tristan's health, did you bring that the, any issues up that you were concerned with to the defendant? Absolutely. Whenever I, like I said before, teachers, when I would pick them up, would tell me about attendance and I would confront her immediately. I'd text her there on campus and say, hey, the teacher's saying this. And she would deny it. When it came to health issues, I said, let's get a specialist involved. Let's go to some doctor appointments. These need to be set. Why haven't you been doing them? So once you found the, found the information and uh, what did you do next? Once I found out about the medical issues and education issues? Yes. Issue? yes. Well, we had a pending case going, and I had limited custody. I continued to gather my evidence and submit it. I consulted with you. So, uh, but I continue to co-parent, if that's what you're asking. Uh, let's let's. So, what caused you to file the complaint against the defendant? Uh, the specific reason was, as I stated when I moved back here, I really thought we had a clean slate. I really felt like things were going to be amicable and that we could raise Tristan together. Uh, but there was a hiccup in January where she didn't like the fact that when I go to pick up my son at her mom's house, because Nikia lives with her mom, or lived with her, her mom at that time, uh, that her mother would volunteer information to me. The mother would tell me things like, she's not around, I, I get him dressed all the time, you know. And these are things she told me, I don't know if they're true, but she would just say, you know, tell me these things. and. And one of these instances, she was telling me that exactly, that she always gets Tristan dressed and takes him to school, that Nakia's not really involved. And Nakia's daughter, Madison, was upstairs, apparently, and was texting the entire conversation to Nakia while it was taking place. And Nakia then began texting me, I'm sorry that I'm laughing, it's, you know, crazy, but uh, but began texting me while I was having the conversation with Grandma. Um, and I explained to Nakia that it's both of our rights as a U.S. citizen to have a conversation. It's protected under the basic amendments in the United States and that she can't tell me and the grandma what to discuss and what not discuss, especially that it's in the grandmother's house and the, and the grandmother volunteered information. But above and beyond that, I said, you have to understand, Nakia, that I'm not taking her word over yours, I'm simply listening to what grandma's saying, and you shouldn't be paranoid about conversations that take place if you know the truth to be otherwise. 
Anyways, that turned into a long, drawn-out dispute, and she eventually ended up blocking my number over that, uh, over that incident. And I did not see my son for a week, and, and I wasn't able to contact him until she reached back out to me and apologized for the situation. During that week, I realized that we were exactly in the same place we were in the past, and I knew because I had put everything on the line when I moved out here that this was the, the course of action. I needed to get a legal document that gave me rights to my child and to be able to see him and not be prevented from seeing him in the future. And that's why I filed the case. So after you filed the complaint, um, did you uh, receive a temporary custody order? It wasn't until we came to the table in mediation, which was a prerequisite for trial, um, that we did reach an agreement that both her and I agreed on. Um, I was full-time student at UNLV at the time. I'm one year away from graduating as an engineer through my VA benefits. So we agreed to weekends for me at the time. I've subsequently dropped school to be involved with Tristan full-time. Um, but yes, we did have a parenting agreement eventually in September. Of what year, sir? Of 2018. Thank you. And, um, you, and you stated that you had visitation on the weekends. Do you know the exact terms of that order was as far as your visitation? Yes, and I don't believe the language was visitations. I believe the language was... Well, time, say timeshare. Right, timeshare. Uh, yes, I was to pick up Tristan from 6 p.m. on Friday and have him and, and drop him off at 6 p.m. on Sundays. Have you ever been denied uh, visitation? Um, have you ever been denied visitation? Yes, I've been, if you will, swindled into surrendering my time because she's made plans with the child and got him excited about him and then told me after the fact. So I've been coerced into, into accepting the terms because I don't want to disappoint my son. Um, I've also been outright denied visitations because the mother says he doesn't want to go, therefore he does not have to go. So, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, if you have more to say, so you go ahead. Just, when I saw the child that weekend, he didn't look like he did not want to go. In fact, his exact words, Mom says, I'm not going with you this weekend. I told him to put on his shoes and come back to the car, at which point she barricaded him in the house. I called the police, and they let her know she couldn't do anything. Okay. And she did send him out with no shoes on, by the way. That might be worth mentioning. Uh, a child who she now claims I'm a stranger, she sent out over a hundred yards to walk to my car with no shoes on and tell me that he's not coming with me. When was this, sir? This was in referencing the, the, the police incident February? Uh, February of 2019. I was just going to actually get to that in the evidence, if not, if I may. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Huber, can you turn to page... No, I'm sorry oh. to interrupt you. Um, yes, it is noon and we need to break for an hour. Is I it? have a couple of hearings at 1 o'clock. Just motion hearings, uh -huh. so we'll start back at 1.30. Okay. Okay, so I'll take my motion hearings between 1 and 1.30, and we'll start back at 1.30. Okay. Okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. Do we leave this stuff in here? Or do you no, Actually, I need you to move it, because I will have other people at those tables. Okay. Work around or so. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm being told that we don't have those hearings now. Yeah. Apologies, hold on. I misspoke. I usually have one o'clock motion hearings, uh, and I try to fit in a couple between one and one thirty when I have a trial. You can leave your things where they are. You can take anything with you that you want to read. It will be locked up during the noon hour. So okay. we'll start back um, about one fifteen. One fifteen. Perfect. 